All right, we move over to the NBA, where we have the NBA opening night slate and the Christmas Day slate. Uh, opening night, we have the uh, rematch of the Eastern Conference semis. We got the Brooklyn Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks at 7.30. And then the uh, rematch of the NBA play-in tournament last year, the Golden State Warriors hit the road to take on the Los Angeles Lakers. And then Christmas, it's that uh, that uh, that quintuple five-header game. I don't even know what the word for that is. But the Atlanta Hawks meet the uh, New York Knicks. That's a first-round rematch from last season. That'll be at uh, noon. Uh, then the Boston Celtics take on the Bucks at 2.30. Golden State Warriors back in action at 5 against the defending Western Conference champions, Phoenix Suns. And then the battle of the big threes, the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers at 8. That one's simulcast on ABC and ESPN. That's how big a deal that is. And then at 10.30, it's Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks against Donovan Mitchell and the Utah Jazz to close it out. Drink, what stands out to you on all these games? The disrespect to the reigning MVP. Do you know, it's been since, um, and I looked this up and I drew a blank, but it's it's been a while since the reigning M- MVP has not had a game on opening night gotcha. nor Christmas. I got you. I'm, like, with you. I'm with you. Like, I don't, I mean, yeah, yeah, I got it. Maybe Jokic is not a, f- a super fan favorite, but he is the MVP. Can I take That's that a like, step further really quickly? How about the disrespect to big men in general? Like, where where are the Sixers in this? I think they deserve to be, I think they deserve to be on the Christmas slate, personally. Oh, yeah. I mean, if if we found the way to, you know, slide in, like, listen, no disrespect to the Suns. I, I mean, they was in the NBA Finals, but, like, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I'm just not, I don't know. I, I think the reigning MVP could be somewhere here. What well, it couldn't have been a game. I mean, I like Luka Doncic and all, but you couldn't get the Nuggets on that 10:30 slot on ESPN. The Nuggets couldn't get that. Reigning MVP? No. Anybody? No. Like it's like I'm not, 76 I'm not, and, Yeah, I'm not really. I'm not really excited about Boston in this slate, to be honest with you. I, I, I'm with you. We seven. <laughs> What we would have been excited to see the seventy sixes versus the Bucks at yeah, two thirty on ABC. Yeah, I'll take I'll take that one. Yeah, I, you know I, I I think that's disrespectful. Um, so that that's my first takeaway. My second one is I like what they did. Hey, listen, opening night we got the toenail rematch um between the Nets and the Bucks. For those of you that don't know what I mean, um, you know Kevin Durant he had a you know a, what should I say shorter toenail or longer toenail? I think shorter. If he had a shorter toenail. Ain't no telling what could have happened with that. That's the problem. Yeah, um, it was too. It was too long. Too long. Okay, so he had a shorter toenail. Yeah, maybe you know we're talking about this this game in a different light. Um, and then at ten we got the, like you said we got the rematch of the play in game, probably the most um watched play in game you know to this point. Probably it, it won't be many times you get two superstars in a play in game. What are we doing here? Um, well, hold on. No disrespect. It was more than two superstars, but you know what I mean. The stars of yeah. their respective teams. Um, no disrespect to AD and Draymond Green and Klay Thompson and all that. Um, so, with that said, um, so we got those two games are opening night. Love it. I'm here for it. Can't wait. Shoot off the fireworks. You know what time it is. And then on Christmas, tis the season. La, 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 la. You know what I'm saying? Um, holla at your boy. We got that, that rematch between the Hawks and Knicks, which – was a series we was excited about. I know a lot of people saying, "What the Knicks and the Hawks?" Don't act like we wasn't we wasn't you know happy about that series when the playoffs came around. The Knicks came kind of flat, a lot flatter than we thought they was gonna be. But <laughs> both of these teams are um, on, on the come up. We see what Kimba Walker can do with the Knicks. See if he can take them to the next level. And then we know what the Hawks did. Just was in the Eastern Conference Finals. Then at 2.30, as you mentioned, we got the Celtics and the Bucks. Um, you know, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't, I don't, I, I, I would have been okay with the 76ers being right here, but we got what we got. Um, so we got Jason Tatum and the Celtics, you know, uh, up against um, Giannis and the Bucks on ABC. So, you know, okay, cool. Uh, then we're going to roll into five. I, I do like, I, I, I'm so anxious to see what the Warriors look like with Klay Thompson back now. I just, I'm anxious to see Klay Thompson come back. And with that being a Christmas game, hopefully we get Klay Thompson get, you know, get the, the muscles warmed up and get, you know, get into the season. 
Um, he hasn't played in two years, so I understand if it takes him a little while. But I would love, you know, to see Clay Thompson back doing what he do, and then see this Warrior back with the pop and lock it like we like it. And then they're going against the Suns. You know what I'm saying? The defending Western Conference champs. Um, Chris Paul is back. Um, you know, Devin Booker, DeAndre Aiden, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's a good matchup. You know the Nets and Lakers. You know what time it is. Oh, yeah. And by the way, if you listen to this and you follow me on Twitter, you know what time it is. I got the Lakers by 10 or more. DM me if you want to make a bet. Either way, we got that game at 8. Um, you know I'm here for that one. Um, you, you got the Nets big three. Um, you know, Harden, Kyrie, KD versus the Lakers, LeBron, AD, and now Westbrook. So, hold on to your seats, folks. And just like my partner said, it's simulcast, so you know what time it is. We're going to get all the eyes on this one. And then at 1030, Luka Dantich and the Unicorn. Yeah, the Unicorn, mystical creature. <laughs> um, at the Utah Jazz. <laughs> Uh, you know, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, you know what time it is there. Mike Conley then came back. So, I mean, not a bad game to close out. It's just me personally, I would have rather seen the defend. I just, it's something about seeing the defending MVP actually get to go out there on, on one of these celebrated nights. And, and you know, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just think it's real disrespectful. And I, I just feel like if he would have been a guard, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Just like you said, but I guess because he's a big and he European, we like, hey, don't worry about him. He don't sell no ticks. Let's just move over him. And I think that's that's just not it. So with that said, man, I'm you know I'm 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 glad that the NBA starts during the week, which is like Wednesday night usually. I'm so glad they don't start on a Saturday and all that and run into football. So. We get to actually sit down and watch these games, and then you know Christmas, they get the spotlight to themselves. So, with that said, the NBA is back, folks. 82 games, packed arenas, trash talk, fans talk. You know what time it is. The NBA will be back, um, I think it's October 19th, which is a Wednesday. So, hey, I'm here for it. Don't forget, uh, don't forget players crying to the reps. Always my favorite part of the action. Uh, I think the uh, the two the two games out of these seven that stand out the most to me are the two games that involve the Brooklyn Nets uh, for different reasons. Uh, Nets Bucks on opening night. We know how great an Eastern Conference semifinal that was, even without um, much of you know a I don't know fifty percent James Harden when he returned in that series, and then we know Kyrie Irving got hurt, and even still. Um, Kevin Durant, just some, you know, a superhuman performance that came up just a little short. I thought he was great um, in that series and just, you know, a, t a toenail too much, you know, on the line, just, you know, just a, a quarter of a step back. And it could be a different, a different story and a different narrative that we're talking about today. But I, I love that game because of, of what it means. And I think that's a, that's something we're going to watch for, you know, who, we're talking about the best player in the world. To me, it's, it's Giannis and KD. Uh, Giannis and KD. That's a debate for me right now. And then on Christmas Day, on um, Christmas night, Brooklyn against the Los Angeles Lakers because of the battle of the big three. You know, we, we saw what Brooklyn did last year with the ac acquisition of James Harden. And now the Lakers have their own big three. I think their big three, to me, I would go with the, the big three of LeBron, uh, AD, and Russell Westbrook. Uh, but, I mean, offensively, I, I do think Brooklyn's got the edge. Uh, those guys are going to put up numbers. Hopefully we see Harden come out and uh, he's at, you know, he's in shape. He's not flopping around like he was, you know, at the start of the season in Houston when we just could kind of see that whole situation falling apart. Um, and, and as, you know, as always, it's good to see one of those kind of, you know, perhaps NBA Finals previews, at least we hope. I think that would be, I think that'd be a great NBA Finals. Those are the two games I'm most excited about. If I had to, the, the two, because we talked about, you know, and I thought it was a great point you brought up about uh, Jokic being left out of this slate. And not only Jokic, but the, I mean, the Nuggets are a really good team. And as you know, before Jamal Murray got hurt, you know, I had them going, I had them, you know, winning the Western Conference. So I think that they're a serious contender. I, I really, I like what they did with getting Aaron Gordon. I think they got maybe the best front court in basketball. When you look at Jokic, Gordon, and Michael Porter Jr., 
So I like that. And of course, we know what Jamal Murray is capable of doing. We remember his bubble performance. So I would have slid Denver in the 1030 um, slot against the Mavericks or the Jazz. I think either both of those teams are worthy of being there. But I'm not sure if I had to go purely for probably ratings, I'd probably leave Luca in there. I think he offers a little more appeal than maybe the Jazz do. And uh, I, I'm looking at I'm looking at Philly. I, I would I would put Philly in there instead of Boston. I, I just I have not been enamored with Boston for months now, and I'm still not. You know the whole the whole uh, rent a Schroeder uh, ordeal. I, is that you know is that going to do something for you? Maybe it does. Which is, you know, and, and it's the same story we talked about during the regular season last year. Like, okay, we got two dudes, you know, on the come up who are just performing at high capacity in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And yet they're, they're not, as a team, they're not getting better. And now you've subtracted uh, the likes of Kemba Walker. Daniel Tice is no longer there. And uh, I'm not a big Evan Fournier fan, but I mean, you had him for, you know, you rented him for half a season and now he's up there with the Knicks as well. So I, I, I'm, I'm not loving that. I, I definitely think, you know, when you look at this slate, you talk about like superstars, Embiid and Jokic are certainly worthy of being on this slate. And if not on the Christmas slate, man, maybe you could throw one of those teams on opening night, you know, so uh, that's where I'm at. As far as some of the other games, you know, I think the I think the Hawks and Knicks is probably the perfect the perfect game to lead in the Christmas slate. You know, it's kind of, you know, on it on its face, it's kind of like eh, Hawks Knicks. I don't know, if, but it does have an appeal from the first round series of last year. Trey Young has superstar appeal, and the New York Knicks. That's a brand. That's a brand, and they they were a serious basketball team last year. You know, they've been a laughing stock for years. Uh, but Tom Thibodeau comes in, gets some playing defense. They add a little more offense. We know what Julius Randle did last year. So, uh, and they got a lot of young players. You know about uh, Emmanuel quickly, R.J. Barrett improving in his second season. Maybe we get a little more from Obi Toppin. So I like that. And of course, you know, you know about Atlanta next to Trey Young. They got a bunch of really good players with uh, the likes of John Collins, uh, DeAndre Hunter. We saw what Bogdanovich can do for you. Um, so I, th- I think that's a that's a really nice opening game. Uh, also, I'm not too crazy about the Phoenix Suns, but they are the defending Western Conference champions. Chris Paul returning with Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton. That's a that's a respectable big three, and they deserve they they do deserve our respect for what they were able to accomplish. And of course, Golden State. Uh, you know, we've been waiting for seems like an eternity to get Clay Thompson back on the court and see what the fully locked and loaded Golden State Warriors look like. Uh, So that'll be fantastic as well.